Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Jake Strand. And I'm Tracy McRae. Chimeric antigen receptor T-cell therapy, more commonly known as CAR T-cell therapy, is one of the most promising breakthroughs in the treatment of some types of cancer. CAR T-cell therapy involves collecting a patient's white blood cells, or T-cells, and sending them to a central manufacturing facility where they're genetically modified to direct them against a patient's cancer. It sounds like science fiction. It, it is science fiction, <laughs> but it's not fiction anymore, Yeah, Tracy. that's right. Once they have been manufactured, the CAR T cells are frozen and sent back to the hospital for IV infusion back into the patient. And here to help me understand, and, and many more, hopefully, how this therapy works is Dr. Yi Lin. Dr. Lin is a hematologist and chair of the Cellular Therapeutics Cross-Disciplinary Group at Mayo Clinic. Welcome to the program, Dr. Lin. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you, and thank you for having me. Yeah. How in the world did we get to a place where what seems like science fiction is actually happening? How many? How long have we been able to use CAR T cell therapy? Yeah, I mean, there's certainly been a lot of excitement about this in the last few years in public media, from patients. Um, but in reality, this technology has been in development for over 30 years, starting in the laboratory. And the very first generation of the CAR-T didn't work very well. And so the, the version that we know of, we, we call second generation CAR-T, it's a little bit like iPhones. We have all these different generations. But the, the generation that is that now we have the FDA-approved CAR-T, the first report of that working in a patient was in 2011. It was in a patient with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, or CLL. And so really in the last six, seven years or so, there's been exponential growth in clinical research in this area. Uh, we've had now industry, pharma company that got involved in pushing this trial to multi-center access for patients to the point where uh, as of late 2017, we had two CAR-T products that's approved by the FDA to treat two different types of blood cancer. So. A lot of growth uh, and uh, results in the last few years, but really this platform, this technology, really took 30 years or more to develop. Well, and, and it has been in, in a lot of popular media, a lot of lay media. And so let maybe just break this down. So there's lots of different parts of the body that fight infection. So why T cells? Why not something else? What is it about the T cell that makes it important? Yeah, when I explain this treatment to my patients, uh, the, the, the comparison I make is the T cells are very much like the foot soldiers. So if you are, I know that's not necessarily the best analogy to use all the time in a battle, in a war, mm -hmm. trying to fight cancer. Immune system is a big part of what can fight cancer that's supposed to be foreign, not supposed to live in our body. And there are types of immune cells that function more like generals that try to direct the actions. And then there are more immune cells that function more like the foot soldiers um, that actually does essentially the actual job of killing cancer cells. And so T cells is one type of white blood cells where they can, they're, one of their main function is they can kill tumor cells. And so that's why you know, there's certainly multiple cell-based and even drug uh, approaches that try to activate different parts of the immune system, but T cell is certainly one type of blood cell that's been the focus of a lot of development because they can actually, if you, so here with CAR-T, for example, if you genetically program them to get them to do hopefully what they're normally supposed to do but stronger, you can hopefully have that um, effect in terms of getting the tumor into remission and so on. That's a fantastic way to describe it, yeah. to say that it's the foot soldier. Is there something in the works that's also like the general, like uh, to bulk up the general so that the general can does a better job of diagnosing or finding those cancer cells? There are certainly uh, approaches similar to that. So uh, here both at Mayo Clinic and as well in my own research program, uh, there are challenges with each type of approaches. So one uh, type of immune cells that I describe that has more of a general-like functions mm -hmm. are uh, things like antigen-presenting cells. So dendritic oh. cell vaccines uh, is another approach that is part of our cellular therapy program. And we have a number of trials in solid tumors, well, not just in blood cancers, that look at that approach because dendritic cells, essentially what they do is they try to educate a lot of T cells on what they need to attack. 
And so one dendritic cell can essentially activate hundreds, if not thousands, of, of T cells. So cool. that's where that analogy comes from. Mm -hmm. However, um, with all of these approaches, it's a um, tumor try to find ways to outsmart you know, these approaches. That's and then why we, it's a we, war. We try to learn about that right. and figure out uh, new technologies to overcome. So you you said that uh, for T cell therapy, that that's more the bl blood cancers. Is it lymphomas? What patients end up using CAR T cell therapy? Right. So currently, for the FDA approved uh -huh. indications, that's two different types of blood cancers. So one is in pediatrics. So uh, children and young adult up to age 25 with B cell acute leukemia, so B cell ALL, and adults with B cell non Hodgkin lymphoma and specific subsets of aggressive non Hodgkin lymphoma, not all types of non Hodgkin lymphoma. So we have two FDA approved CAR Ts looking at that, that can be used to treat those two diseases. It is not for frontline, so not for somebody who's just newly diagnosed with the treatment, but somebody who has these types of cancers, has had some of the conventionally available chemotherapy, immunotherapy drug, and hasn't worked in that situation. But there's certainly a lot of research going on right now, both in those diseases, looking at can we use CAR-T then earlier in the treatment options, as well as other types of cancers. How are those cells, those T cells, removed from the patient? I mean, the person has cancer, but they still do have some T cells there. They're just not able to overcome the tumor and fight the cancer strongly enough. So they need to be bulked up with CAR T cell therapy. Correct. So how do you take those cells out? So the patient is hooked up to a machine um, and undergo a procedure that we call leukapheresis. So leuk uh, essentially means white blood cells. Apheresis, removing the white blood cells from the patient's body. Some of these patients may have gone through a treatment called stem cell transplant. Uh, and there they're hooked up essentially to the same type of machine to remove their blood cell, except there they may receive certain drugs to help move these stem cells that normally live in the bone marrow into the bloodstream for collection. Um, here, it's, um, we don't need to give them these drugs. They should have adequate amount of white blood cells in the bloodstream. So it's a little bit more similar to, say, certain types of blood donations that certain people may go through, where they're hooked up to a machine, and certain parts of their blood are removed and the rest are put back in the body. Most of the time, and again, this can vary depending on the type of CAR-T trials or the type of CAR-T product they go through, but most of the time it's a one-day or one-time collection, so it's actually a half-day, about four, four or five-hour procedure. And sometimes, depending on how uh, good the veins are from the patient, they may need to have a line place to collect. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time, because this is a one-time collection, not multiple collections, uh, patients can't, we can just use their peripheral uh, vein and not need to put in a central line for that process. And, and is this kind of thinking about the length of this, you know, just a couple of questions, is this something where now we've gotten to the point where the, the cells go off, they get modified, they get beefed up, um, and then brought back. Are patients in the hospital the whole time, or are they coming back and forth depending on um, the, the type of treatment? What are we seeing now yeah, for I most patients? I imagine dramatic music is playing, yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> um, sometimes a patient feels a little anticlimactic after yeah, going through the whole process, and we come in uh, you know, with the cells ready to infuse, and if, particularly if they've had a stem cell transplant, and they look at the bag, and it's not as big as the stem cell infusion, right. and they're like, that's it, that's what, we, you know, that's what be I've been working up to, you know, yeah. exactly, and we try to warn them, well, maybe all the excitement is happening after the infusion. But you're right, this can be a very logistically challenging treatment, uh, because even uh, a lot of references we make for the, the patients are stem cell transplant process because many of them might have gone through that or was preparing for that mm -hmm. and find out that they couldn't get this and now they need to look at CAR-T treatment. But even then, even there, it's not quite the same. So because 
So for example, in stem cells, we're taking out the patient's own stem cells. We're not doing any further manipulation with the cells in the laboratory. These cells are ready to infuse back, so the patients pretty much can go on to the next portion of their treatment, which oftentimes is bigger dose of chemotherapy followed by stem cell infusion. Well, here, we need to do that manufacturing in the lab, that genetic change of the, the T cells in the laboratory. And depending on the CAR-T product or the technology, that can take anywhere from two weeks to four or five weeks. Wow. And that's a time frame where we know the patient had not, their, their cancer had, has been blowing through the mm -hmm. treatment they've had up until then, and we still need to find ways to manage their cancer so that they're still healthy enough to get the CAR-T right. cells once they they're made. They can tolerate them, yeah. Correct. Yeah. And especially for our Rochester, Minnesota practice, we certainly have a number of patients that aren't necessarily coming from local. They might come from all over the country, even all over the world, to mm -hmm. get this treatment. And so what do they do in that two, three, four, five weeks time in between? Oftentimes, they go home. And so we were working with, for example, Center for Innovation to figure out, and actually I believe they're part of now uh, the Kern Center and mm -hmm. um, have a new name now for, for, for their center, but we essentially were working with them to look at that process, that patient experience. How do we optimize that communication with the patient and also the home physician so they know what to watch for to stay in touch with us so we can manage any symptoms in a timely fashion because getting from collection to dosing is a real world feasibility. Um, We've been talking about the exciting cancer treatment that uses the, pain, uh, the patient's own cells to attack the cancer. We're gonna take a short break. When we come back, Dr. Lin will discuss recovering from CAR T cell therapy, what the results have shown and what's next in research. Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Jake Strand. And I'm Tracy McRae. We've been talking with Mayo Clinic hematologist Dr. Yi Ling. Dr. Yi Lin. Dr. Lin is chair of the Cellular Therapeutics Cross-Disciplinary Group at Mayo Clinic. Ooh. So Dr. Lin, this is, it, it is. It's, it's all, we were talking, this is a lot to cover in a short period of time, but we've got a lot of really fascinating things to do in this world of CAR-T. So we, we've talked about a bit how this gets done. Um, you know, I think important to patient experience is not just the time it takes to get done as you were bringing up, but also the recovery. So what kind of side effects can patients experience once they get to that anticlimactic piece about getting the small bag of T cells? Then a lot of excitement happens. Yeah. Um, that's one of the reason why CAR T therapy is not yet available just at any local oncology clinic. Oh, okay. Multidisciplinary specialty care is needed because the fact that these CAR T cells goes back in the patient's body, they can find those tumors and become activated to try to kill the tumor. That same process of them becoming activated will cause the side effects that the patient experience. And what I try to warn people, and you can't quite prepare somebody well enough until they actually go through it, mm -hmm. is, you know, Patients often will tell me, well, I've, I've had a tough time with chemotherapy. You know, I've gone through stem cell transplant. I know what that is like. You know, I can get the mucositis and all these side effects from chemotherapy. And I said, that's wonderful that you're able to go through that, but now you're going to experience side effects that's nothing like the chemotherapy such, so far. Such as? So the two most common ones we tell patients about are cytokine release syndrome and neurologic what symptoms. Is, say that first one again. So cytokine release syndrome or CRS is essentially from the fact that when the CAR T cells are trying to kill the tumors, they're going to release all types of chemicals that they normally make inside their cells. They get released into that tumor environment to try to kill the tumor cells. So a lot of these are cytokines or chemokines. And those are the same type of chemicals that cause all the symptoms that you may experience when you have a really bad flu mm -hmm. or a really bad pneumonia. And so that would start off with fever, and the fever curve can get really high, sure. 40, 41 degrees Celsius for days, and it may not break through with Tylenol anymore at some point. So this is what happens when you really genetically change and soup up you know, your, your T cells to be super active. And what about the neurological ones? 
With the neurologic symptom, that's probably not quite as well understood in terms of why do people get them and who might get the more severe symptoms. We think, again, um, the most common presentation is within the same time frame of when patient experience cytokine release syndrome, and therefore there's probably some relation mm-hmm. to that immune activation. So perhaps somewhat similar to a viral meningitis type of picture. And so there the patients may initially um, have some confusion, difficulty finding words. It can progress to the point where they cannot communicate at all. And so when patients go through these symptoms, this is where they may even need ICU level monitoring. They need not only hematologists who's giving them this treatment, but good ICU doctors, good neuro doc, neurologists, cardiologists, infectious disease doctors, multidisciplinary team to support them through this, this time frame. So to that point, that, that's why you need to be able, that's why that turnaround time is so important and the ability to be at a center that has a high volume is so critical so that you can, it's like you're taking patients to the brink and then trying to get them well enough again to see the results. Is that That is fair? correct. I mean, this is a treatment that right now is um, being very tightly regulated, right, by the FDA and other organization that tries to uh, monitor outcomes for cellular therapy as we all learn how best to support patient through these treatments. Yeah. You mentioned that you turn these CAR T cells into the, the foot soldiers that are all hyped up like superheroes. Do they get tired out and you need to put another batch of them in or is this just a one-time thing? Currently, we are treating patient with a one-time infusion and seeing how well does that work and how long does that work. There is opportunity if the patient had some response up front for a second treatment. But we are right now still trying to learn if this stops working, what the mechanism that it stops working. So is retreatment with CAR-T, again, the right treatment option for them? And how well does it work the second time around? So yes, it is an option. It's not something that's being automatically done. We have less than a minute left, so tell us, are more cancers going to be available to be used for? Are we going to be able to use CAR T-cell for more types of cancers, or what's next in research? There's a lot that's going on. Uh, Definitely a lot of clinical trials already looking at other types of cancers, so I definitely would encourage if uh, a patient or their doctors at home has a type of cancer that hasn't responded well to other treatment options to explore what clinical trial testing is available at Mayo Clinic. We think multiple myeloma may very well be the next uh, blood cancer that could have an FDA-approved indication if the trial continues to go um, as well as it has. And here at Mayo, we uh, want to be the destination medical center for this type of you know, very complex care that we excel at, where we have a number of different complex medical procedures and treatment where we not only have the best outcome in the, in the country uh, in terms of responses, you know, management of side effects, but also patient satisfaction. And so this is a type of treatment where we want to have that same um, outcome, which we've seen so far coming into clinical practice, uh, which I'm not shy to, to brag about because it's, it's the uh, work of the entire team, you know, and, and the, the services of all the people behind it to, to be able to make that happen. But we also have a number of clinical trials, not only partnering with industry, but our in-house technology where we're looking at other types of cancer, how to give uh, CAR-T safer, so the next generation technology where we may not see as much side effects or we have smarter ways to manage the side effects, as well as even potentially using CAR-T beyond cancer treatment. We've been talking about the exciting new cancer treatment option, CAR-T cell therapy with Dr. Yi Lin, a hematologist and chair of the Cellular Therapeutics Cross-Disciplinary Group at Mayo Clinic. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Lin. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.